How many people can you think of? How many people in the political world on both sides of the aisle who are so sure they're right, but if they deny the plain truth about Jesus and who Jesus says God is, I'm telling you, if you get the foundation wrong, everything you think and see about the world, especially about yourself, is going to be just skewed. You can probably list off people that you know in your life who have a real passion for what they think is right. And yet, they're living in ignorance about who God is. The Apostle Paul said that that was the case with all of the unbelieving Jews who hated Jesus, and so they crucified him, who hated his message that salvation comes through Christ alone. You can't come to God by any other means except through Christ. They hated that message. And so, of course, they hated the people who followed in his footsteps and preached that message after him. They hated it. And so look at the language Paul uses to describe all of the unbelieving Jews. Look carefully on the screen. He says, For I bear them witness that they, talking about the unbelieving Jews, they have a, say those words, they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. A zeal, passionate enthusiasm, but not according to knowledge. Beginning in verse 12 through 15. When it was day, the Jews made a plot. And look at this. They bound themselves by an oath. And you're going to want to circle that or underline that because I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Neither to eat nor drink. Have you ever fasted? You ever fasted for a meal? Do you get hangry? You ever fasted for a full day? You get headaches? They said, until we kill him, we won't eat. That's zeal, wouldn't you say? Keep reading. They bound themselves by an oath neither to eat nor drink until they'd killed Paul. There were more than 40 who made this conspiracy. They went to the chief priests and the elders and said, we've strictly bound ourselves by an oath to taste no food until we've killed Paul. Then they tell him what to do. So you, along with the council, you go to that Roman tribune, Claudius Lysias. You tell him to bring Paul down to you as though you were going to like determine his case. We have some more that we want to hear from Paul, and we want to bring him back to trial. You're not really going to do that. And then once they bring Paul down, we're ready to kill him before he comes near. You see what they're going to do? They're setting all this up on a lie. They had a zeal for God. Ought to be a lowercase g there. But listen closely to me. It was a God of their own imagination. In fact, their zeal for God... They ended up creating God into something that he never was. The God that they were worshiping, it's not the God of the Old Testament. They had turned God, the God of Israel, into someone so different than he actually was. Here's how different. When this God of the Old Testament, that they thought they were being so faithful towards, and they had such zeal towards, when he came here and was standing right in front of them, they didn't recognize him. The God that they thought they were being so faithful towards. We are servants of God. He's standing right there. And you don't recognize him. Religion means nothing if you don't have a personal relationship with the heart of God. Can I tell you what all those Old Testament religious rules were supposed to do? They were supposed to bring you into relationship with God. So if you have the best track record of church attendance, and you've never missed church, even when you're sick, you come to church, and you have the best tithing record of anyone in history, but you don't have a relationship with God, your religion is worthless. It's worthless. It won't account for anything when you stand before God. What he wants is you. 
He wants your heart. He wants your zeal not to be towards, what can I do to make sure that my husband sees me as more religious than him? What can I do to make sure that everybody sees me as the most most faithful Christian on the block? Instead of that, he wants you to say, God, forget about what other people think. My passion is for you. I just want to grow in my love for Jesus. That's what he wants. Jesus is our religion. The Apostle John answered a question that I imagined at this point somebody might be asking. Somebody might be saying, Pastor Luke, how can we make sure that we don't make the same mistakes that these 40 hitmen made so that we don't live an entire life based on something that isn't true? Don't you want to know that? The Apostle John told us exactly how we can know where to go for the absolute truth so that we'll never be in the spirit of error. Here's what he said. He said it better than anyone. We, the apostles, are from God. They were appointed by the Son of God to do a particular thing. Whoever knows God listens to us. So those appointed apostles, those who walked with Jesus, he put them on a mission to reveal him and write it down. So whenever you listen to what those apostles are saying, whoever listens to us knows God. Whoever is not from God does not listen to us. So here's how he ends. By this, if you listen to what the apostles wrote, you know you're from God. By this, we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So if you want to know, I just want to live on the side of truth so that when I die, I won't find out that I lived a lie like those 40 hitmen. It's real simple. Go to what the apostles said because Jesus told them to say it and you will know if I just read this and obey it, I'll be on the side of truth. It's not complicated. You don't have to live in error or fear that you're living wrong. Just go to the Bible. That's the source that you can know it's trustworthy every time. Let me show you what Paul said at the end of Romans 10. Brothers, My heart's desire and prayer to God for them is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that they have a zeal for God, but not according to knowledge. For being ignorant of the righteousness of God and seeking to establish their own, like I can earn enough on my own, they did not submit to God's righteousness. And look how it ends. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone who believes. Here's what that means. If you're sitting here today and you think, I'm like your father-in-law. You may be a bad guy, but I'm a good guy. And you think, I'm going to stay on this path my entire life. And one day I'm going to reach enough goodness so that when I stand before God, I'll stand there on my own merit because I'm a self-made man or woman. I'm here to tell you, if you're on that road, there is never, ever, 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 ever going to be an end to that journey. You're going to try and 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 and you'll look down and it'll be like you never even started. Christ is the end. He is the finish line of that journey to try to be good enough to be made right in the sight of God. You want to be declared just in the sight of God? You can today by putting your faith in the only one who is good in the sight of God. That's the good news of the gospel. Hey friends, Pastor Luke just wanted to take a quick second to say thank you for watching the video. If you found it to be edifying and encouraging, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. For more videos and sermons like this or to watch the full length sermon, you can find it right here on our YouTube channel or by visiting our website, www.hopeoflbi.com.